I'm here with Bill Baker from the Hickory Aviation Museum, here to introduce us to the P-3 Orion. Welcome to the Hickory Aviation Museum, and right behind me is the P-3 Orion, which was built by Lockheed Corporation. Um, first introduced in 1962, and it is still flying today, some 58 years later. Uh, it was uh, about 650 manufactured by Lockheed for the U.S. and various allied countries and another 107 that are, were built by Japan under license by Lockheed. Its uh, main mission is uh, anti-submarine warfare. Uh, another important one is search and rescue. This aircraft can stay, stay in flight for uh, up to 11, 12 hours. What we do is we shut down one engine, we fly on three engines to save fuel, and we can just keep flying and flying and flying. It has no air-to-air -air, uh, in-flight refueling. So once we take off, We've got to find a piece of land to come back to because we are a land-based aircraft, mm -hmm. unlike most of the other Navy jets that you'll see, which are carrier-based. Can we take a look inside? Absolutely. All right, welcome aboard our P-3 Orion. Um, P-3 through with a fairly large crew of 11, uh, 11 people. We had five officers and six enlisted, and I'll cover each position as we walk forward. In the back of the aircraft here is our, is our crew galley area comes with uh, two bunks for sleeping for our pilot and our flight engineer. We keep rotating them through since they're driving the airplane. We need to keep fresh people uh, flying to keep us safe. And we have uh, plenty of places for people to sit and eat. Um, back here, refrigerator, oven, coffee pot, hot pots, uh, drink storage. We would fly for up to 11, 12 hours, so there was often multiple meals. As we move forward through the aircraft, I'll just cover each position. Half window observer is responsible for in-flight looking out the window, which is a pretty pretty good job to get paid for. And uh, he was also our in-flight technician. He carried a toolbox and some spare parts and pieces, so if we had any kind of electronics breakdown, he'd be the guy to take a look at it. He'd also help the crew do their pre-flights of the aircraft. All right, our next position is the ordnance man. He also functions as a uh, aft window observer, and his responsibility is to um, load what are called sauna buoys, which we'll talk about here in a second, and if we have any kind of weapons on board. Right, I just mentioned the word sauna buoy. Sauna buoys come inside of these cases, and what a sauna buoy does is it, it's just mainly how we do our anti-submarine warfare mission. These are um, different types. The main part type that we use are called passive sauna buoys. So what we're doing is we're going out to look for a submarine. We can't see him because he's underneath the water. So we need to find the sound. So what sauna buoys do is they get dropped out of the aircraft through through these chutes here. And there's also uh, 48 more outside the aircraft that we load up before uh, we take flight. And when we launch it into the water, the inside of these cases Come out and they hit the water and what it is it's a little floating uh, little floating collar around a receiver and transmitter and it deploys a cable down to a preset depth with a uh, transducer which is a listening device so that hits the water and it's just listening so say a submarine were to be passing through the area this way it'll pick up the sound and it'll send a line of bearing this way. So we drop a pattern, 16 sauna buoys, 4 by 4 by 4 So now I have multi sauna buoys located. So if I get a, a line of bearing says there's something over here making noise, and this sauna buoy over here says I got something making noise here. So where they cross, there's something under the water making noise, i.e. our submarine, and that's how we start tracking them. If we're allowed to go active active sonar, which if you ever watch old submarine movies and you hear the pinging, that's just a pulse, a pulse of energy. So this sends out a 360 degree pulse of energy, and if it picks up something large like a submarine, it'll give a range, range circle, and a bearing to where that source is. So wherever the range and the bearing cross, there's something there. And that's how we track submarines. These two guys right here are the ones that operate the sauna buoys lead operator and usually the junior operator is somebody who's learning either new to the squadron and is learning his job or he's learning from this operator to eventually 
uh, take his position when he's ready to leave. So this whole unit here, this whole system, is all this, uh, the computer system is what they use to process the information coming out of our sonar buoys. This station is our radar operator, and he does five very important jobs. One is the radar, and he's looking for anything on the surface of the water. If we're flying, radar's going, and we pick up a blip, something on the surface, we can go down and have a look at it. If we don't have a radar that's detecting things from you know, 100, 100 plus miles out, all we're doing is flying around looking out the window hoping that we find something, but the radar helps find stuff. He also has a camera that drops out of the nose of the aircraft underneath, and it's a 360 degree infrared camera, and we use that for videotaping. If we fly down and there's a surface ship that's going along and we think that he might be up to something, we'll fly alongside of him at 200 feet, turn the camera on, videotape him because we're going 200 miles an hour. It's kind of hard to see what we're looking at, but he can look at it and replay it on his, uh, on his video system. And then when we get back and debrief, they can pull apart the video and see if maybe there's something going on with the ship. He's also responsible for listening to electronic emissions from other ships. Uh, land base, surface base, subsurface base. They stick an antenna up and broadcast. We can detect that radio signal. That'll give us a, an area to go look for something. So he's got a, a pretty important job and he's pretty busy. And our next seat is, uh, this is where I first started in the aircraft. This is the navigator communicator. And his job is to navigate and communicate. It's pretty simple. We like to keep things simple in the Navy. Uh, his, his responsibility is for talking to everybody that we need to be talking to, but also making sure that we know where we're going, uh, we know where we've been, and we know that if we have a problem, since we're over water most of the time, we need to know where the nearest airfield is that might have fuel for us if we're running low, or if we have a equipment malfunction or something serious, like fire or something's happened to the aircraft. He needs to be able to uh, uh, plot a course and tell us which way to fly. This seat here, once he's qualified as a navigator, he starts learning how to be the tactical coordinator. And what the tactical coordinator does is, if you think of this as an 11-man football team, he's the quarterback. He's the, he or she, is the one that comes up with the tactics for the mission and then plans it as we're, op, as we're executing the mission. He, he or she is telling everybody in the back of the plane what to do. They're giving he or she their input from whatever their job responsibilities are. And it's up to him to sort through it all, figure out the plan, and to execute and make it work while talking to the pilots driving the airplane to tell them where to go. And uh, it's a very busy job. All right, now we're up here in the cockpit. This is where the aircraft is driven from. We carry uh, three pilots. Two are on duty at all times. All those gauges down the, horizon uh, the vertical to the horizontal. Engine one, engine two, engine three, engine four. So I've spent about 3,000 hours flying these aircraft as a tactical coordinator, which is a, not the pilot, but the guy that tells the pilot where to fly the aircraft. And uh, I did numerous tours in P3s, as well as uh, uh, a tour board an aircraft carrier, the USS Enterprise, working on the flight deck. And I am retired from the US Navy, and it was a great career and a fun career.